Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. It is Friday. Obviously, I am uh, really taking advantage of that casual Friday uh, <laughs> idea. So you guys, you may remember uh, the North Carolina mother, Leah McGee, whose son, Christian, he was a student athlete at Central Davidson High School. He was suspended back in April for asking his teacher if the term alien on a classroom assignment referred to a space alien or illegal alien. So he used the term illegal alien, which apparently is the deadly sin now. All right. So his teacher and his school administration labeled him a racist for asking this innocent question. Uh, they said it was the equivalent of saying the N word and then ultimately suspended him for multiple days from school with no chance of appeal. He was also prohibited from competing in a season defining track meet. Oh, and by the way, after he was labeled a racist, uh, his family, as you would assume in this woke world, got all sorts of death threats because, oh, now Christians are racist. Well, last we spoke with Leah and her attorney from Liberty Justice Center, they had filed a lawsuit against the Davidson Board of Education for violating Christians' First and Fourth Amendment rights. But within this lawsuit and within this injunction comes certain evidence that is now surfacing. And recently... It's been revealed in this lawsuit uh, concerning the Board of Education. There's been some new evidence that's come out. See, many years ago, which, by the way, I, I'm I, Leah and her attorney are going to join me in a second. But many years ago, I steered clear of this the first time that I talked to Leah because I didn't think that it mattered. But apparently it does to the Davidson Board of Education. So years ago, Leah McGee uh, had a, an, an addiction problem and she had a criminal history. And since then... She has learned from it. She's recovered and she dedicates her life as an advocate, helping others stay off of the wrong path. By the way, she was even appointed to a Brunswick County Addiction Commission by a superior court judge. So this is someone who is like letting, uh, you know, trying trying to teach from their own mistakes. But that didn't stop several of the Board of Education members from disseminating Leah's old mugshot and her record in an effort to disparage her and her son's name. So now we find out Board Chair Alan Beck is accused of texting false allegations to a state senator saying that Christian had been thrown out of several schools and that Leah has a history of harassment. Another board member, Ashley Carroll, sent text messages to another community leader making a false claim that Christian was uh, kicked out of multiple schools for being a racist. So, I mean, we can just go through some of these. So this is, of course, uh, the gray is this particular board member, but she's saying, we have the details now. He's a racist. You guys can see these text messages right here. Uh, there's one that says there's more beyond that. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Furthermore, there is not one class, one kid in that class defending him, not one. She sends uh, Leah's criminal record, the mother of said child who was kicked out of multiple schools for being a racist. OK, then it's again, we know the details now. He is a racist. The piece of paper doesn't in indicate the entire situation. I asked you to trust me on this one, she says, because someone's pushing back and saying, hey, guys, this looks really bad for you. <gasps> How dare you question me? I asked for you to trust me on this one. And then she says the person who uh, is talking to this Board of Education member, what about the Hispanic kid threatening to beat his uh, ass? And this is, of course, what we know now. The Hispanic kid threatening was just that was all a joke anyway. This Board of Education member says, would you beat a kid's ass who was making anti-Semitism comments? It wasn't one statement. It went on and on. The kids are mad. He is a big problem. It's a three day suspension. It's not the end of the world. Well, I'd like to welcome Leah McGee back on the show, along with her attorney, Dean McGee, educational freedom attorney with the Liberty Justice Center. And I want to ask you guys both. First of all, I got to apologize. Leah, you look so lovely in your dress. And Dean, you look so fancy. And it, I just took casual day way too far. So I apologize for that. But I want to ask you both some questions. Leah, I'm going to start with you. Um, I'm, I know the answer to this. I'd like you to answer it because you're Christian's mom. Is it true that he was kicked out of multiple schools for this very same problem? Sarah, Christian's never been kicked out of a school, never been kicked out of any school, let alone for racism. Christian has never, ever been kicked out of any school. Every principal Christian's ever had from pre-K up until now has agreed to write statements on his behalf and to speak to the Board of Education members 
each of those principals said that they have had no communication with the Board of Education members. So they don't even know how they came up with this. You know, I mean, it's just lie after lie after lie with these people. He's never been kicked out. He's never had a label of racism placed on his life, which is why we are fighting as hard as we are. So I'm not sure why they would want to continue to hurt a child when they swore an oath to protect and defend the children of this county. So it it's beyond me as to why this adult woman would continue to spread lies about a 16-year-old boy. Yeah, I mean, it does seem very odd that you would be um, trying to go so far all in in creating a scenario that does not exist when you could have just said, you know what, the principal got it wrong in this one. The administrators got it wrong in this one. In fact, would you would you tell I think I read that the principal is no longer employed with the school at this point. That's what um, we've heard, and that's what the school posted. They posted um, a paper that said uh, had a, a portion of the minutes after the school board Uh oh, we may have lost her. Um, I'll go ahead. We'll we'll restabilize that connection. And I want to go ahead and, and ask uh, Dean, where are we at in the process of the lawsuit um, against the Davidson Board of Education? So since we last spoke, we filed what's called a preliminary injunction motion, and that's an opportunity to get before the court and ask for the court to temporarily. Um, while the case proceeds, clear Christian's record, and that would allow him to go to school, apply to colleges, and just kind of get back to normal in the interim, because litigation can take a long time, and Christian shouldn't have to wait, you know, one or two years, however long this case is going to take, uh, to get that off his record temporarily. So we filed the motion, and included in that motion was some of this evidence that you just discussed, which is really concerning behavior by the Board of Education. Yeah, uh, so I guess... Another question for you would be, I'm reading this and I'm thinking in my average person mind, not being an attorney like you, I'm thinking, well, if she's spreading rumors that you maybe could prove she knows is not true that Christian was, you know, uh, suspended from other schools for having a history of being a racist and you guys know that's not true. Is there any sort of defamation claim that you guys can add into this lawsuit being that that's just a, a complete lie? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable telling you that we are um, speaking with North Carolina Council about pursuing uh, state law defamation claims. Right. Um, you know, our, look, our, our case, Christian is my client. And, and you know, we, are fi- we filed a lawsuit in federal court to vindicate his constitutional rights as they relate to the suspension. But this other behavior is relevant. And yes, you know, it was it's one thing to spread the mugshot, which is disgusting behavior and an attack, and, but they've taken it a step further where they seem to have just invented allegations right. against Lita and Christian. So the short answer to your question is yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because that's where it went horribly. I mean, to your point, it went even more horribly wrong to me because I'm reading this and I'm thinking, okay, all right, you're trying to assault her character for what? This has nothing to do with any of the you know allegations put forth. But then you add on top of it just a complete lie about a 16-year-old boy. And now if I'm the mom, like I'm out for blood. Not literally. I just want to make sure to say that because you're an attorney, right? Not literally, but I'm just saying like my mama bear claws are coming out and I'm like, how dare you just lie about my son to a community member who I assume, I don't know who this community member is, but but I assume this is someone who has like some pull within, you know, the city or at least the the the, uh, the school system. So we we know that the state senator was contacted with these misrepresentations. We know that yes, this is a local, you know, community leader who was contacted. Another person who used to work for the court system uh, was contacted with messages, and those messages. Uh, when when this board member shared the mugshot, she said to this former law enforcement officer, but didn't you work hard to get drug dealers off the street? In other words, saying that, that Christian and his mother deserve no say, no representation, no defense from mm-hmm. anyone in the community because of this drug arrest over a decade ago. Um, anyone who feels that way has no place working with kids, around children, making decisions for children or schools or anything like that, in in my opinion. Um, so I want to play. I'm not sure if we're going to get Leah back on or not, but I do want to play uh, part of 
your evidence, which is the recorded conversation that um, Christian's parents, was it just Leah or was it Leah and her husband? Leah and her husband, but Leah took the lead in the conversation. Okay, so it's the both of them talking to uh, the, what, the assistant principal? This is the, the assistant-, assistant principal who, who was sort of the motivating force in the suspension. Right, okay, so here here is some of that conversation, watch. He swears to me he wasn't trying to be intentionally rude by asking that. So I, I talked to him about asking that question by saying illegal alien versus, oh, are those those people that need a green card? Like there's mm-hmm. respectful ways of asking that question and there are very disrespectful ways of asking that question. And I, and I agree the three days out of school is harsh, mm-hmm. but it's a line we drew in August. And even though it hurt to give him that, because I, I didn't want to go there with him, but we decided that in August, and if I don't give him that, then I'm being unfair to the 15 other kids that have served that up until now mm-hmm. for saying the N-word or anything else under the sun that's racially charged that creates a disruption in the classroom. Because he said, well, he laughed. He thought it, was, he thought it was funny, or at least he laughed about it and said, oh, it's no big deal. And in the hallway, when I was talking to both boys and Miss Hill, said those are just words it's not a big deal right and i said no sir the, those words do make make a big deal out of this the way they were said and their meaning i've taught i've taught gifted really smart kids you can have a ball with those kids as long as you keep them on the narrow straight and narrow and i think miss hill has struggled a little bit with that being so young mm-hmm. and being a female I, she needs to work on really making her boundaries strong and straight, and that's something we're going to continue to work with her on. She lets it get a little bit too loosey goosey sometimes, and the kids will take advantage of that. Mm. So, d- explain this context to me, Dean. Um, when he mentions, well, we made this, you know, since August, well, we've had these other kids who have had to have the same consequence. And then he mentions using the N word and he says, so we have to do this to Christian as well. Can you can you fill in the gaps there? So I, I can't actually completely fill in the gaps there. It's it's sort of inexplicable to me. I mean, what he <laughs> what he seems to be right, what he seems to be saying is, well, other students at our school have said genuinely racist things. Right. And therefore, we need to punish Christian equally. It'd be unfair to those students. If we don't punish Christian equally, even though what he said is racially neutral and, and, and not racist. Um, you know, I mean, he uses the term racially insensitive. But again, it's it's just not a racial term on its face. Um, and nothing in the suspension. I mean, they had an opportunity in the suspension documents to write a detailed description. That's what they were supposed to write. There's nothing in there to indicate that this was racial other than this administrator's opinion that it was. And you heard in that tape, it was an opinion that um, apparently wasn't really shared by, for example, the other kid in the class or even the teacher, right, who both said, as my interpretation of that tape is they're both saying it's not a big deal. It's the administrator trying to correct them and tell them it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So tell everyone um, what they can do. Where can they where can they go to, you know, can they help? Can they donate? Um, what what how can we help you? So we, we represent all our clients pro bono for free. Uh, we don't take any money. It's LJC.org, Liberty Justice Center. That's where you can find us. You can find us on social media on, on X at, at LJ Center. So if you could follow our work and, and if people are able to make donations, We really appreciate it because that's how we're able to represent clients like Leah. Great. I appreciate you, Dean. And I think, Leah, we we got you back just at the tail end of it. Um, (laughs) But uh, don't worry. Dean did a great job (laughs) in your place. Um, So just we had I just finished with Dean. We were talking about where people can go to learn more about the Liberty Justice Center, because, of course, they are representing you guys pro bono. If you could tell the viewers just one last uh, word about what what it is, why are you doing this, and what do you ultimately want for your son out of this? Well, we're we're fighting it because it's just wrong on every level. Aliens not a race; it can't be racist. Um, we're also, you know, fighting against the lies that are being spread about our child, um, as any mother I think yeah. would. And you know, we're standing up against the smear campaign. It was tacky 
it was tasteless. Um, it really reflects the character of those that are on the board. They attempted to assault my character and failed miserably, but their malicious character was in turn highlighted. So we're hoping that the public can see that. Um, what we want more than anything is for an apology, a very public apology. And not just, uh, oh, I'm sorry your feelings got hurt or in the South, a bless your heart. No, I want you to say what you're sorry for, that you lied about my son being kicked out of schools. I want you to say in detail what you, you're apologizing for. I also want the three days that he missed out of school credited back to him and uh, the uh, racism label removed and the suspension reversed. Sarah, I don't think that's a big request. Not. So the fact that they are unwilling to do, do, to do so shows the prideful nature of the board that we're up against. Um, it's a simple fix, yeah. but for some reason, they're unwilling to do so. Well, it is a, uh, a simple fix, but um, in the event that they continue fighting that, there is another simple fix at the ballot box that I hope will be uh, utilized uh, a lot. So, Leah, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I am in your corner. I just, mm -hmm. as a mom, I can't imagine uh, what this must feel like. And you just keep us posted on what we can do to help. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See ya. Oh, my gosh. These freaking public school administrations and teachers just like we've got to burn the entire system down. And honestly, I was going to say start over, but I don't even really want to start over when it comes to public schools. If you like this clip and you want to see the full episode, click here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, come on, you know you do. Click here.